Okay, hi folks. This is uh, AI First Engineering class, going through the tran transformation of different industries. Uh, this is the last module in the transformation of the banking industry, and it's a discussion of banking as a service coming from a recent review. So let's get going. <coughs> so here is the review from uh, Business Insider. And they have a slightly strange statement about what is being driven by. I think it's actually being driven by, um, I wouldn't actually agree with this. It's clearly being driven by the fact that it's pretty useful to be able to take services and compose them in custom fashions. Now, the people offering it are going to get uh, fees for providing this, especially if they uh, do it in a white label fashion so that uh, it's branded by the people they work for. Um, they can share. They can grab data if they do more. I mean, you get data telling you what better services you want, and they can work with both the partners providing the service and the clients who use the service. So here are a few of five of the um, leading U.S. cases: Green Dot, um, which actually was founded in prehistory, 1999, and um, it. Uh, Works with Uber, Walmart, and Apple. So I don't think Uber, Walmart, and Apple, when they offer payment services and things like that, say they're using Green Dot. But that's, a, of course, typical of a of a white label style approach. Here is a more normal time, 2014. That remember when we looked at fintech? That was a year when uh, fintech funding was getting started. Um, it has a nice API, and it, may, it meant to be pretty fast in in uh, customizing uh, solutions. And <coughs> here is one which I haven't heard of, Canberra, and neither Stemcastle or Q2. And um, it's meant to have a network of 850 community banks. And that means it can get the FDIC um, um, whatever it is, $100,000 uh, insurance on 850 different accounts and thereby get insurance on a much larger amount of money. And I don't even know those clients. Uh, actually, I was wrong when I said that we were looking through uh, US. US was the previous page. Here we have uh, a couple of UK cases, Clear Bank, in its. Um, this is very recent, 2017, and it, it's sort of obviously just starting. It only made a million dollars in 2018, and it links to all sorts of different payment schemes. And of course, we should, we noticed in the fintech discussion that the um, there was a lot of regionalization. There were Latin American providers and China providers and India providers and U.S. providers. And then there were, of course, some dominant forces like Visa and MasterCard, which were totally broad. But as we start, that's the sort of bottom. As you go up towards the higher level services, those get more and more customization. And that creates this explosion of, um, of activity in the fintech field, which are customized solutions, either customized to a region or customized to SMBs or particular services. And it works with Azure, as a, I mean, whether it's Azure or Amazon or Google, I don't think matters, but uh, you should certainly work with public clouds. And again, I haven't heard of these particular clients. Starling is a reasonably well-known neobank, we've seen it before. It's one of the uh, ones that started in the golden start age. And uh, it does consumer and SMB, and then it had APIs. And as I pointed out, banking as a service is built on APIs, because as a service means you have components which link together. They're sending each other messages, which messages tell you information about money. And those messages have to have an API so that they can be interpreted by the, by the entity, whether it be another service or a back end that receives it. And um, again, I haven't actually heard of their clients. Okay, folks, here is a sort of summary of the issues in banking as a service. Here are some of these providers. We talked about some, and we'll go through other ones later on. 
uh, here are these sort of qualities, which uh, and it's not just banking as a service, but general providers have the nature of your services, how how many you have. It's not necessary to have lots of them. Whatever you have, better be deep and powerful, and you obviously need a good reputation. One important one in this field is speed to market. When Apple comes to you and says, I want to produce an Apple card, you or a Apple payment service for, for checkouts, you better be able to get it ready in a few seconds. And then the scalability means that as Apple grows to conquer the world, you grow with it. Now here is some sort of stack of um, or areas in which there are services. Well, there's a user interface. That uh, can never be underestimated. That determines an awful lot. We mentioned fraud a few times, looking for anomalies and buying hippopotami in China and things like that, which I mentioned in the past. Uh, that is an important um, area which has very strong AI uh, um, component. Regulatory, we saw that um, the uh, money laundering and uh, know your customer. Uh, regulations. Well, you need to get lots of data uh, so that you know the uh, you can get some additional insight to feed into your AI about the people you're dealing. And then, of course, you have to work with payment gateways or be a payment gateway. And um, you need to be able to do everything a bank does or link to others who do. I mean, you don't have to have. You don't have to compete with Visa, but you need to work with Visa and MasterCard and the other banking, uh, the other bank cards. And it's again not necessary, but a license is interesting because if you have a license, you can do a lot more yourself, and uh, then you can actually offer things like an account to a user. And there are, of course. Then this thing, then this license sort of leads to a couple of business models. Ones where you don't actually keep the person's money, you just have some ephemeral service. That has some advantages, it's sort of lightweight. You don't have a lot of responsibility. And you only do, you actually um, work directly with p people who offer the full service. And uh, then those people don't, of course, compete with the pe with those offering full services, but of course they have less opportunity for money. But I would say if I was doing banking as service, I would be in this one, this uh, right-hand column. So the left-hand column, or the left the to the left of the previous column, uh, we have those that actually do hold the money. And they have real tell you have actual banking services, and then you have enhance those banking services with your favorite BAAS clients, and then you have, of course, a substantially additional uh, more sources of money, and you get a lot probably directly get a lot of data. But you could, I think this site here, this rightmost column, can actually get data, they just have to ask the people who use their services and work with the customers to give them data. And um, they are, in some sense, competing with any other clients they have for their services. So this gives a richer fiscal base for the services, but uh, has some disadvantages. So I think this is a tougher one. But of course, if you're, if you're aggressive and want to make the most money, it's a fine one to do. Right here are the um, a sort of summary of the five ones we did before. Green Dot, Synapse, Canberra, ClearBank, and Starling. And they're in these um, qualitative uh, um, features we listed on the previous um, uh, slide. And here we have Green Dot is meant to have really good services. Um, and they're <coughs> And it has, these services are pretty sophisticated. And it has its own banking license. And it's presumably it's been around a long time and has a chance of, um, of being having a good reputation. And it has, um, having worked with Apple and Uber, you can certainly expect to scale. And it has a um, 
not so great time to market, four months to prepare us a capability. You would actually think it could be the fastest, but maybe because I think this time to market really depends what you're offering. If it's a very sophisticated thing, then it's going to take more time to market. Um, here we come to Synapse, which uh, has a strong breadth of services. It has a strong emphasis on APIs. I mean, they keep saying it's API, but of course, we remember there was a previous graph which says there were uh, 1,675, I think, APIs in FinTech. So it doesn't actually, I'm sure Synapse doesn't have that many, and I'm sure it doesn't have one. I don't know how many tests, maybe 20. Um, it's uh, 2014 from the boom in FinTech boom starts. And it has, a, you can get to market quickly. And it's API. Actually, I think if you look at all these things, APIs are very, are very valuable. If you own an API that's good, and you can get other people adopted, you've locked in your, locked in a lot. Um, Canva, um, I like most of these as a strong breadth of services, and it has, um, it's, it, it doesn't, it's not itself a bank, but it has a a built-in collaboration with um, the so-called Stonecastle Network, which are these banks that it works with. Stonecastle and Q2, which they work with, have been around for a long time, relatively long time, 15 years. Uh, but, um, and it's pretty slow, this one. Um, so it actually aims at large companies, so at better scale. Um, ClearBank is meant to be um, very broad services. It has its own license. It's incredibly young. If you remember, I think it had almost no money. Um, and it's um, variable time to market. It probably hasn't been around long enough to establish that number. And it's worked with uh, a couple of companies. I doubt if Tide is the shopping detergent, but um, so I don't know what these companies are. Uh, Starling is, as I say, a relatively well-known fintech, um, but has a focus. I actually don't think a focus is bad. Actually, do I mean in this world we live in, doing one or two things really well is, in my opinion, the recipe to success. Doing too many. I made that mistake when I had my startup in 2000 in the broad area of Zoom. We tried to do far more than Zoom does today. Because we were doing actually online online edu uh, online education uh, synchronous uh, um, um, classes, and we had all sorts of nifty class features uh, like quizzes and things, and and we had special customized things built on. That was a huge mistake because we were. And if you look at WebEx and Zoom today, we had. They have fewer, but incredibly robust, reliable services. And of course, our services, partly because we were young, and partly because the network was terrible in those days, our services were hardly robust. They, we had a good architecture. We used publish, subscribe technology to manage all the messages. That was a very good decision, but it wasn't enough. Okay, so Starling is another one with its own uh, banking license. And, um, <coughs> It's not yet really established because it's a young bank, a young fintech, I should say. Um, it's pretty fast, six to eight weeks. And it has um, some sort of API connection to some other thing called faster payments. And so it's meant to be able to do high transaction volume. So if you look at these, they're all pretty reasonable. And I'm not certain this performance comparison Distinguishes them a lot. Although there are some which are rather different from others, but they're all broadly in the same area. Possibly with the license, you usually do. Uh, there seems some surprising variation in time to market, but I bet you that's due to the nature of the product. Okay, folks, here is the last uh, three slides of this um, whole banking, banking and AI uh, section, and we're going through some other. Banking as a service companies, BBVA, we've seen before actually. It's a Spanish bank which um, has a banking as a service platform, which it does, um, according to this, several services like identity verification, 
moving money around, making accounts and issuing cards. And um, it is presumably a solid choice, although it is, it is not a US bank, and so that may hold it back. Um, and of course, there is a non-trivial problem with going with any FinTech, because I can't believe that they will survive, at least not all of them. Uh, I would think some fraction of all those FinTechs we've heard about so far, doubt if more than a third to a half actually make it to a viable future, and that includes the ones that get purchased. Um, all right, so Solaris Bank is um, pretty recent, 2016. It has a banking license and offers services across many, many uh, categories, including this famous Know Your Customer um, feature and payments, accounts, and debit cards. And it, you know, we have this incestuous relationship between fintech. So a neo bank goes to Solaris Bank for its technology. Um, here we have a French one. I again stress the importance of the international character of this classification. And it has a white label, just to remind you. I told you what a white label is a label which is white, so it doesn't say Treza. And then you can write um, Lydia or Quanto on that label to say Lydia offers the following wonderful services without telling you it came from Treza. This is, of course, how. Um, Groceries, grocery stores offer uh, their own products. They will secretly go to the main manufacturer in that area and ask to, re, uh, to resell their, their, their offerings with their own Kroger's or what have you's name on it. Here we have another three, Marqueta is pretty, in, these, in this world we live in, quite, quite old, 2010. And it uh, does cards and um, only. And of course, um, if that's all you want, which a lot of people do, uh, say here's DoorDash. So I've heard of DoorDash, so that's some sort of delivery company for groceries. Square is a well known financial uh, service that makes loans, I think, and things like that. And so for them to just, they may just want uh, this type of. Um, uh, Cards and things like that, and um, to, to as their offerings. Rails Bank, uh, it's a more it's 2016. Uh, again, the coming to the end of the big explosion in fintech, and it's got an API in, including cards again, and uh, issuing. Um, uh, Account numbers, internationally recognized account numbers to users. And it, um, it's hardly big, it just got $10 million in Series A funding. And it's trying to expand. And it claims that it can, um, people can register very quickly and get accounts in 15 minutes. FIDA Bank is a, a bank, a, a digital only bank, um, which, uh, in principle, is a good idea, except it's a highly competitive area because, as we know, all the big banks have digital components. I mean, I, I haven't switched to a, <coughs> a neo bank because I just use the digital part of my real bank because uh, I don't care about banks terribly much. I just use it as a place to pay checks and uh, things like that. And um, it has, uh, well, uh, Telefonica sounds like a big. A telephone company, and it has uh, this for people actually do uh, user interfaces and marketing for customers. Okay, the last slide in this uh, uh, in this module, which is the last module in the banking and AI uh, le um, unit, and here we have a few rather uh, assorted uh, things which are. Here we have Bankable, which is a fintech, but it's relatively old by fintech standards, 2010. And it has um, managing uh, manager of um, accounts and digital banking and payment cards and e-wallets. And it um, works with Visa, which obviously you have to do. And again, I don't know the companies it works with. 
Um, here we have a bank founded in 2008, and it has its API and core and banking as a service services. And of course, this this is an, I mean you know, all of these are all in the mix because there's so many services. Remember 16, 1675 uh, APIs. And so you can cut off, you can chop it up in all sorts of different ways. So this this uh, this company is working with the Bitcoin company or the blockchain company Coinbase. And um, so that's why I said actually this fintech works with other fintechs. Well, I don't know whether this is a fintech, but it probably is. I think anything which has uh, banking as a service almost is by definition fintech. Um, here we have a, 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 a company that works with universities to give students bank accounts and and do various financial things. That's just showing the, the you know some of these sub areas like universities are so big that you just if you did the banking for universities that's a that you've got a healthy healthy profit. Bancorp is a, an old U.S. bank and it has. Um, Various financial services, and it's not quite clear how digital they are, but I assume it's just listed here. They have some digital features. This looks like, uh, you know, we have this sort of thing from the very smallest, just started fintech to these giant banks uh, like Chase and uh, Bank of America and Wells Fargo. And there's a, just a whole continuum from one to the other, and uh, you can quite what you call a, a fintech and quite what you call a, a when when you take a big company which has everything whether you split off its banking as a service capability is not quite so obvious um, here we have this 11fs foundry which comes from a company called 11fs naturally and it is uh, basically obviously this financial services company built its own uh, software to do some digital capabilities, and now it's trying to sell it to other people. That's not too surprising as a business model, but not maybe quite so exciting. Notice in all these discussions, we really aren't focused. There is AI built in there. You know, if you have a fraud detection service, you better have AI. If you have personalization, customer personalization, that almost certainly has strong AI. But uh, sending money from A to B and converting it from dollars to to to, uh, <coughs> to, to um, francs or something. Or sorry, they don't have francs any longer. Euros. Um, that's um, that's also built into this discussion, but it is not really um, a uh, AI. All right, let's. Uh, that's the end of this section. Thank you.